large language models power generative AI chat applications like ChatGPT by understanding the context and generating human-like responses. These models typically undergo a three-stage training process where they learn to respond to the user queries and the output responses are one token at a time. The first stage of the training is known as the language modeling where the model analyzes vast amounts of text data to understand patterns, grammar and meaning by predicting the next word in the sequence through the training paradigm known as the Caution Language Modeling. In the second stage of the training process, the model learns to respond to the user queries, where the queries are typically formatted in some predefined instruction templates. In the final stage of the training process, the model learns to understand the user preferences. This helps in aligning with the ethical guidelines and reducing the likelihood of producing any biased or harmful content. This also helps in understanding what the user expects from the system. As mentioned earlier in the video, the model produces the output in a token by token manner. So basically it predicts the next word based on the context of the previous words. When an input text is passed to the large language model, in the final layer, it produces what we call as logits. The logits are numerical scores that are generated by the final dense layer of the large language model. The number of logits would correspond to the number of words that are part of the model's vocabulary. That is basically to say that each and every word of the model's vocabulary has a logit score associated with it. However, the logit scores are not intuitive enough for us to understand the score for each of the words in the vocabulary. Therefore, we pass them through a softmax function to generate a probability score for each word which is found to be far more intuitive. The softmax function would take in the logit scores and squeeze them in the range of 0 to 1. This is the same as what happens in your multi-class classification problems. Now we can simply look at this multinomial probability distribution of the words and figure out what the next word is going to be. Now let's take an example of an input sentence and look at the probability distribution of the model while predicting the next word in the sequence. Note that the tokens were arranged in a descending order with respect to their probability values and each time the next token predicted in the sequence was the token with the highest probability score. This is known as greedy decoding. And while we are on the topic of probability distributions, can random sampling be a potential approach? The answer is yes. Now let's take an example that might ring the bell to you. We have a box containing 8 balls of different colors. We have 3 red balls, 4 blue balls and 1 yellow ball. Now if I were to pick a ball randomly, what would be the most likely color of the ball that I just picked? The answer is that it all depends on the probability weight of the item being picked. So in this case, it would be blue, followed by the red color. Going back to the example of the Harry Potter text, let's see how the random sampling works. We see that the tokens are being picked randomly based on their probability weights. Random sampling decoding involves selecting the next token probabilistically based on the model's predicted distribution, allowing for more diverse and creative text while avoiding overly repetitive or deterministic outputs. And this is where the temperature parameter comes into the play, where we would like the user to have some control over whether they would like the output to be more deterministic or whether they would like it to be more creative and diverse. So as a modification, 
we divide the logit's value by the temperature value before passing them on to the softmax function. When the temperature value is set to 1, the probability distribution looks the same as after applying a regular softmax function. When the temperature value is higher, it makes the distribution more uniform. And as a result, the model becomes more exploratory, where less likely tokens have a higher chance of being selected. When the temperature values are lower, the model tends to choose high probability tokens consistently, leading to more focused and deterministic outputs. This is due to the probability distribution becoming skewed, where a few tokens dominate the selection process. Apart from the temperature parameter, we have two more sampling parameters, namely top k and top p. Top k limits the token selection to the top k most likely tokens based on their probabilities. So instead of considering all possible tokens, the model only looks at the top k choices and picks one of them. Top p, on the other hand, which is also known as nucleus sampling, works a bit differently. Instead of selecting a fixed number of tokens, like in top k, it chooses tokens such that the cumulative probability of the selected token sums up to p. 